Hello, my name is Omar Abbasad. It's Friday, March 16, 2018, at 7.43 p.m. in Toronto. So I just walked into the door, and I'm going to um, describe some of the um, incidents I experienced today. So um, let me start with a, a very alarming incident that happened around midday at uh, the Young and Bloor station. This would be recorded um, in the uh, video cameras uh, on the platform um, on which uh, the eastbound train would be exiting. Coming, um, excuse me, that would be the, um, the westbound train coming east to west. So um, I was in the train and uh, these two black women, tall black hefty women, young, um, maybe in early 20s, um, they started talking really loudly. Of course, uh, when somebody acts up in the subway, you look to see what this commotion is all about. And uh, so I looked up and uh, one of the women uh, put, their hand, put her hand on her waist and bent over and kind of st started staring at me. So I got up from the seat. I had to exit in the next stop anyway. So I got up and I turned my back on her and I walked out of the train when the train stopped next in the next um, station, uh, which was Young and Bloor. So I walked out on the platform and uh, suddenly there was this um, heavy tap on my shoulder. And uh, she said, uh, excuse me, um, you're not brave enough. And uh, they were laughing between each other very, very loudly. The whole platform would hear. And uh, so I turned to her and I said, I, is something wrong with you? Are you mentally ill? Because I had absolutely no contact with her. When I saw her looking at me, I turned around and I went the other way to the next door away from her. And she followed me out. So I would suggest to the people who are taking part in the community program, stopping program, that you pull that file, you will see exactly what happened. So I stood still and I allowed her to go in front of me. They were laughing and talking between themselves. And she mentioned name um, Rick. You're not, you're not brave enough um, to the effect, something to the effect that you're not brave enough to try somebody out. So um, pull that video for, um, you know, maybe the police out there who's listening to this, pull the video. This is a direct result of the community stalking program that uh, is going on. The, um, the person named Rick is the monitor on the account. So I heard that because I'm flagged permanently, any two citizens can go and co-sign and uh, have me monitored and, and start surveilling me with their friends and family and their network. These two black women I'm suspecting is a result of that. Now I de-escalated, as I said, um, I, as I as I said before, I just came from seeing a cardiologist, and this is exactly the scenario that played out in the mall when I called nine one one when the two Muslim women were harassing me, and I ended up getting charged. I had gone to the doctor that same morning with heart uh, complaining about heart palpitations from the first inc incident that that uh, happened with these two women same scenario played out so today so um, I stood still and I let them move on um, there seemed to be today uh, somebody closed an account somebody opened an account uh, there was some reporting that was submitted because I was being harassed about it I tweeted some of that that was me R-O-S-H-I-N-I-911 -I -I in the bus um, and uh, these remarks are very very stressful they, um, they revolve around prostitution, somebody being a whore, um, certain names are being called, Muslim men names who all had their hands inside of her. Uh, she's a dog, um, she's a Chinese whore, a registered Chinese whore, a registered Chinese dog. These are coming from the Chinese um, um, patrons on the bus and the train. And this is very, very loud talking. Certain names were called people, new people who had their names on the account. 
um, one of them may be in the environment, not from the company that I'm working with. This one name is not somebody I'm working with, but uh, who is in the environment. So um, this man could see me share because somebody has to see me, has to monitor me, silhouette style. And I heard I was stealing from this company, this new company that, I, uh, that I'm working at for three days now. <laughs> For um, anybody's information out there, I actually brought my own tea, which I left in the kitchen for anybody's use. Um, I don't steal cutlery because I have, um, you know, I have very expensive uh, stuff that uh, I use. There's not nothing there that you know that even that even um, is worth uh, um, if. If, which is never going to happen, and it's never true, if somebody was even uh, thinking of stealing a stuff, this is not the kind of stuff you steal. So even so, uh, it's cheap stuff. So it is, and there's no point in even saying that I'm stealing. And of course, I don't steal. So um, if none of it is making sense if this is being said. Um, I heard that I'm being monitored as a bisexual I am not bisexual, I'm not gay, I'm strictly straight. Um, I've only dated men in the past and I intend to continue in the future until I get married, which I intend to do. Um, so uh, these, things are, um, these things are a direct result of the community targeting program that I'm in. I also keep hearing the word, you're a target, you're a target, you're a target, you're a target. Uh, so we can do anything and get away with you. You're not a person. You're not. You're not. You're an animal. That's another phrase I keep hearing. You're an animal. You're an animal. So this is. Um, these are co consistent uh, comments that's being made. And again, as I said, this is a direct result of the targeting program because I'm flagged. So um, these are some clarifications I wanted to make. Uh, um, the the reports that were submitted. Well, meetings uh, were held and these things were discussed because people are reporting things about me that's not true. Absolutely not true. And it's very stressful. It's very, very stressful when I hear somebody has opened up the account and they put it back on, meaning that it's on and off, meaning that somebody could call in um, an assault with a remote weapon on you because this is really, really hard in criminal activity. And a neighbor has it. So a brown skin uh, person said this, so which means that most likely the person who has it in, on the floor is also brown skin. So the neighbor has it. And the neighbor is come, uh, calling in the assaults with the remote weapons, which is also causing my heart issue. So um, this, is a, this is attempted murder. Uh, if lasers are being used and tasers are being used, and right now it is being used on my hip as I'm talking, and the neighbor is doing it, I heard, so we know the neighbor is doing it, and everybody knows. So um, I do have uh, some valve issues that was confirmed by a third doctor today, a cardiologist. Um, the last time uh, this was discussed, and the x-rays taken, it was mild, so I'm gonna have it checked again. This was a couple of years ago, so I'm gonna have it checked again. Um, so uh, if somebody has an underlying uh, heart issue and you expose them to a tremendous amount of stress, horrific amount of stress, and uh, you, you hit them with lasers and tasers and microwave-based weapon weapons, yeah, he will kill them, basically. It's a murder. It's a murder program. So somebody obviously is trying to kill me, if not with remote technologies, stress. So the monitors, if somebody, the, the two citizens who are co-signing, they will be sued for attempted murder. They could be sued for attempted murder. And one of my neighbor's door just slammed, and I'm going to assume that that's the neighbor who is assaulting me with directed energy weapons. And it doesn't take a whole lot to image somebody through the wall. Technology could be set up for hundreds of dollars to do this. And obviously, 
um, the people in the building don't want me here, so the, the motive is there. And the report that criminalizes me is there. So all these things are adding up uh, to, um, to, um, to very, very valid ongoing motive to use lasers and microwaves, to train discipline, to torture, to get me to move, number one, and number two, to enroll me, uh, well, actually to, um, to, to train me as a prostitute and to imprint people. So, um, you're, and, and also you're not allowed to push back, you're not allowed to, to tweet as I'm doing right now, or um, put anything on the YouTube as I'm doing right now. Uh, you're not allowed to fight back because you're supposed to be a slave and you have to be told what to do by everybody. So, I had a good day at work, um, uh, went in a little bit late because I had to go to see the doctor. So, um, got some uh, uh, report finalized. Uh, there was absolutely no negative um, issues at work today. I, I have a great relationship with the lady there. Um, and again, I am um, naturally very outgoing. Um, I'm a, you know, uh, I'm very, uh, I enjoy people. Uh, and I enjoy hearing about their lives and their experiences and so on. So, you know, I'm, I talk and I, I do... Um, try to um, to, um, to keep the relationship on a on an even keel at least I try my best to so if then if the, if the relationship is infiltrated and obviously it's going to go downhill so far so good talk to you another time